Hello, this is Vic. Thank you for watching my channel and thank you for joining me today. I am in beautiful Cape Town in South Africa. I'm at the waterfront, as you can see right behind me. It is early on a Sunday morning and I've got my ticket to go to Robben Island. So my boat is leaving in about uh, one hour. So join me as I take you through a tour of this very, very historical place. Now it is uh, Sunday, as I said, it is uh, early in the morning, but it's very, very cloudy. And uh, I'm not sure if the boat will make it to Robben Island today. Sometimes they cancel it if the weather is bad, but we'll go and see. And if we do make it to Robben Island, please follow me for a complete tour. And uh, we may get to see some very, very interesting places and also learn something about history here in South Africa. And again, thank you for joining me. Let's go and check out the boat. Bye bye. So I'm inside the uh, ticket center. Of course, I got my ticket uh, already reserved. I don't think there's a way you would find a ticket for today. Uh, they're reserved uh, way in advance. And I'm going to go this way towards the entrance of the ferry. Let's go. There is already a waiting queue or a line you can see over here and the passengers who pass through security right there and the boat, it's not here yet, it should be parked somewhere out there. And I just went through security and here is the boat that you see right in front of me. With the uh, very very loud seagulls right above me and above everybody else. I hope I can find a place to uh, sit somewhere in there. It doesn't look like there are too many places. And I'm sure once it leaves the harbor, it will be quite cold out there. Hello again. It's about 15 degrees. It's uh, very cloudy. And once the boat goes out there in the open water, I would imagine the temperature will drop even, even further. So uh, there are no seats inside. So I'm going to sit outside. And, uh, We're leaving. We're leaving actually early, 10 minutes early, but you can see the uh, the waterfront in the distance. The beautiful thing about the uh, Cape Town waterfront is that uh, the marinas and the harbor all around it are a working harbor actually. You can see the warehouses right here. So this is a very, very active harbor. And once again, right there in the middle of the frame, you can see uh, Table Mountain covered uh, by the clouds. Well, we have uh, finally arrived and it was about 45 minutes, the, the whole ride from Cape Town to Robben Island. <laughs> so once you get off the boat, uh, there are buses waiting and uh, that's where I am right now. We're waiting for the driver, the bus is full, so we should be leaving in a few minutes. Let's see where it's going to take us. Group you were, yet A to B. If in a D group, you will get only one visit every six months and one letter every six months. Languages in South Africa today, we have 11 official languages. In those years, you could only speak two of those languages inside this building. 
English Afrikaans. Start in Johannesburg. Arrested shortly after the Sharpeful massacre, when 69 people were gunned down by the police while they were protesting peacefully. And also, the situation in the country at that time, it was still very volatile. So one day just before his release, the whole cabinet sat down in parliament and they passed the general law amendment bill. The guide is explaining that this is the lime quarry where Nelson Mandela worked at as a prisoner. And there's a cave right there right in the middle. That's where they used to rest. That's what he's explaining right now. What a terrible place. does not belong to the state. It belongs to the Anglican Church. Now, 1931, the Anglican Church, they were against it for this building to be destroyed. It was used only by the warders and the families. Now, prisoners could only be sports from the early 70s, and that would happen in the prison. Most of the buildings on the island built during World War II, when South Africa joined Allied forces in 1939. They saw Robben Island as a very strategic point from where they could protect their Bay Harbour. The island served as a naval base, a holiday school until 1959. Now coming up on your right, the Garrison Church, built in 1841. It is one of the oldest buildings that is still in use. If you are able to, if you look on top of the church, you will see there is a flag hole. It was a tradition that whenever a child was born here, they would waste a flag. Boy, a blue flag, girl, a pink flag. And then the boys were all the island, the also had its biggest population. We had about 3,000 people garrison on the island during that year. Hello again, uh, we're in the middle of the bus tour at uh, Robben Island and uh, they gave us a 10 minute break so we can walk around uh, in, in the background right behind me in the far distance I can see Cape Town. So, so far the uh, tour has been extremely interesting. We passed the uh, leper cemetery, we passed a couple of schools, we passed the main village. This place is really huge compared to Alcatraz. You, you cannot walk, and that's the uh, uh, the bus tour around the island. Very, very interesting. I guess we're going to the prison next, and we'll get to walk around the prison as well. And uh, that's that's coming up. Uh, so far, so good. And uh, here's my bus, bus number six. We have taken a break for a few minutes to walk around. There are a couple of uh, buildings here there is like a uh, place where you can buy refreshments and toilets now in the distance you cannot see it very well but in the far distance I would say about 10 miles away is the beautiful town of uh, the beautiful city of, uh, of Cape Town so time to go back into the bus uh, so far it has been very interesting so let's see what else is uh, coming up Right now we are outside the prison and we're waiting for a tour guide to show up. So here's our tour guide. I think he used to be a uh, an inmate here. Yeah, 
I can see the double fence. You can see the tower right in the middle of the frame, and there's a double fence, wire fence running around the uh, compound. And uh, the guide in the bus was explaining that uh, dogs used to run between the two fences to make sure nobody escapes. All right, let's go inside. No more wind. Okay, we're inside. Here's a set of beds. I guess the guide will explain to us. I am from Houghton province in Johannesburg. I'm going to start with this section. This section is G. It has four big communal cells inside. These two are the entrance. There's another two at the end. And when we finish here, we will go to B section. It's our leader's section. Nobody else will be allowed to go in there. If they find you there, they will punish you. They were regarded as being very dangerous by the prison authority. So there, we will talk about Mr. Mandela, and you'll be able to see Mr. Mandela cell there in a new uniform. We used to wear the green ones with brown shoes. I was taken inside, I stayed in E, from E to F, and later to this one here, G. We used to call it old man's section. Because majority of the prisoners that stayed in this section are those who were here in the 60s and the 70s. They were doing long sentence, some even life sentence. You'll find them in this section. They'll tell us about the treatment in this prison. Especially in the 60s, early 70s, it was tough. Prisoners were treated very badly. They were beaten, forced to go and work in the quarries. Remember, the, the president, we had a new president at the time. Mr. F. W. De Klerk. On the 2nd of February 1990, he stood boldly there and he addressed the nation. And he said, I am going to release Nelson Mandela and other political prisoners. I'll let those in exile come back home. I'm going to sit down and talk to the ANC for a peaceful settlement of this country and I will unbend all political organizations in this country. And that's exactly what happened. So it is, uh, it is absolutely incredible as uh, one travels around the world and learns about the history of every nation, of, of every nation and, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the feelings and the emotions you have when you learn about things like that and, uh, well, Let's go and see what else is coming up. But uh, after listening to this uh, gentleman here, the uh, guard, who was a former inmate, after Hello. listening to his introduction, um, I'm quite shaken. So let's go see what else is coming up. I am now following the crowd towards Nelson Mandela's cell. I'm going to pass through this little gate here. I'm following the group which is unusual because usually usually on the first and let's go as far up to the front as possible because we really want to videotape and record what the tour guide has to say so here we are we're in a courtyard there are buildings around us let's go see what the idea here is is B. They will take the tennis ball and cut it, a very small cut, and they will take a message written in a piece of paper, push it inside the tennis ball, they will hit it inside, they will get a, their message. Right. That's how the two sections communicated. There's their garden over there. They planted vegetables, beautiful flowers there in the garden. Mandela always in the garden, Elias Mutsualedi, Govan Becky, Tabon Becky's father, he was doing life sentence in this section. Well, according to the uh, uh, tour guide, or the, the former inmate, Mandela spent 18 years looking out towards his courtyard from the fourth window, which is the window to the right of the frame. So if you look at one, two, three, four, this is his window. Or it would have been, or it was his window, right there. And right there in the corner was his garden. 
right there actually you can see the light inside I don't know if we're gonna go get a chance to look inside I hope so but that's uh, wow what do you know so now we're entering the wing where Nelson Mandela's cell was and it's one two Three, four. So this must have been his cell right here. Uh -huh. So this is the inside of the cell, the window, blankets. Lass mich einmal gucken, Leute, die nicht fotografieren wollen, dürfen auch mal gucken. Imagine spending time here. It's about, I'd say it's about three meters by three meters. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not really sure what to say. Uh, there have been places uh, in my life, uh, very historic and very special places I have visited. But uh, what you see behind me, just uh, two to four meters away, is, uh, or used to be Nelson Mandela's cell uh, for 18 years here at uh, Robben Island. I'm uh, very happy, very grateful. I. Uh, actually made it to this place. It is not easy to get to, of course. You have to get to South Africa, I came down first. But I love history and uh, I'm quite uh, touched. I'm actually quite emotional about being here. And uh, very thankful that I finally uh, made it back to the boat. identical cells. Now, the guard or the uh, tour guide was saying that uh, they used to sleep on the floor. There was a, just a very thin mattress and you can tell this is concrete. And you can uh, imagine how cold it must have been during the winter or at any time actually. And the very last view of uh, another courtyard, the building that I just came out of, right there in the middle of the frame where Nelson Mandela's uh, cell was. And uh, here's the guard tower right there, and that's the exit. So, time to go back to the boat. It's already been two hours since we arrived, and it looks like, uh, seems to me like we were here for 30 seconds. So. Let's, uh, let's go say goodbye to this wonderful man. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.